Welcome to Health, Wealth, and Happiness, a fast-paced, informative, hour-long program dealing with physical, emotional, and mental health issues, consumer information, and money management, as well as the arts, theater, travel, entertainment, social, and civic events. Brought to you by the University of South Carolina School of Medicine Specialty Clinics, the Institute for Partnerships to Eliminate Health Disparities, the Newberry Opera House, the South Carolina Philharmonic, Supplements manufacturer A.J. Lanigan, Leon Jones Insurance, and the Mitchell House and Gardens. And now, here's the host of Health, Wealth, and Happiness, Gary Posick. Good afternoon, everyone, and welcome to Health, Wealth, and Happiness. Here's a rundown of today's program. My first guest joins us by the phone as he does the fourth Wednesday of every month. He's Rusty Brazzy, and he is the founder of Score Navigator, uh, dealing with a, a company that helps people understand their credit. And we've been talking with Rusty for several months now about individuals taking advantage of understanding credit and how it affects their lives. Today we're going to change focus a little bit and talk about businesses who could and should use Score Navigator. From 1.30 to a quarter of two each Wednesday, Don Schaefer, travel expert, joins us. And today he's going to talk about five summer travel scams that you should avoid. My final guest of the day will be Steve Phillips, Minister of Music at the First Baptist Church here in Columbia. And his topic will be the 26th annual Carolina Celebration of Freedom. If you've never seen this program, Try to make it a point to do that this Sunday. It is wonderful. It really is. So I hope you'll stay tuned for the entire program. And welcome back, Rusty Brassett. Good to, good to have you here, Rusty. Yeah, hey, Gary. Thanks for having me back. Now, you know, we, we have talked up to this point about how individuals can really take advantage of learning about how business and industry uses credit. And usually uh, credit turns out for a lot of people to be their enemy rather than their friend. You might want to explain that. Well, the, the reason why, and that's, that's a good point to bring up, Gary, it's because um, what we've talked about over and over, and you'll, you'll hear me keep saying it, listeners, is the credit data is not always correct. And so where it can be your friend to help you get you know, better loans, um, better rates, better credit cards, um, all the obvious things, because the data is not being reported correctly, it actually puts you in a position to where um, just based upon the approval rate, you may get the credit, but you're paying a higher amount of money each month. And then the other thing that you have pointed out, and this is really frustrating, is that logic doesn't always apply when it comes to the way in which you pay your bills and how it affects the credit information that you have or that creditors have. Absolutely, because there's so much credit data that's going out there that that's one of the reasons why the, the information doesn't always get reported correctly. So I, I suggest that somebody's, you know, that if, if you're trying to apply for credit or you're just concerned because there's so much identity theft going on, it's very, very important you check your credit all the time. And one of one of the things that we've just added into Score Navigator that might really, well, what we feel is already starting to help people, Gary, is that you can actually know which time of the month is the best time based upon action steps that we recommend for you, where you can have your credit pull to have the maximum results, and that way you also know that all your credit data is up to date when that creditor does pull it, they're getting the best information on you. Rusty, the unfortunate thing is when you talk about people's identity being stolen or finding out the hard way that what you thought was a good credit score or good credit data out there on you not to be the case, it's always after the fact. You can't seem to get ahead of the curve. No, you can't because, unfortunately, a lot of people on the online sites, they use common uh, usernames and passwords. 
and a lot of times they like even myself. I'll be honest. I may use you know one to five of the same. I'll interchange, but because we're always on the go and everything's internet based, uh, we we tend to sometimes leave uh, some things unsecured. And when you do, that's when they're going to come out and grab you. Uh, what I find out, Gary, is that a lot of times it's just people going in and making that phone call to you and getting you to give them certain information over the phone without being sure who they really are. I've seen emails that go out that say that they're from a specific company, uh, but it's not really that company. All they did was go in and just change and, and put their logo and stuff onto that email. Uh, what are the advantages that we that we provide for the consumer in Score Navigator and our sister company Credit DNA? Is that you can you'll get an alert ahead of time, so you're not always having to keep looking. If something happens, you're going to get an alert. It's going to tell you your 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 credit file has been touched by somebody, and we can shut it down. We can get in touch with the creditors, get in touch with the credit bureaus for them to prevent any loss for. Them. Well, you make an excellent point because sometimes what you will get looks legit. It may come from PayPal. It may come from a credit card company, and it looks absolutely real. The problem is the questions that they're asking. It's called phishing, and basically they're asking questions, and it usually goes something like this. We've had a a computer failure, and we need you to re-enter some information that's vital to your account. We want you to re-enter your social security number. We want you to re-enter your password. Information that they should have. My recommendation, and I'm, and I'm sure your recommendation as well will be, if you get something that looks legitimate, but you're questioning the, the kinds of information they want, for crying out loud, pick up the phone not the phone number that's given on this site, but pick up the phone and call PayPal. Pick up the phone and call American Express or whoever the credit card is issued under and say, I've gotten an email. Did it come from you? Absolutely, Gary. That You have given it to them 100%. Do not respond to anything that you see in your email. Make that phone call because... They, they are fishing. They are getting to get your information, and they're going to spread it all over the place, and you're going to have loans under other people's names with your social that, that you don't even know about. And then, then it comes too late. I've watched some people that we've had to work with where they worked on it for six months to a year to try to get the identity back. It's just it's difficult. Now let's switch gears and talk about businesses, because up to this point, that one you've been on, we've talked about individuals using Score Navigator, which businesses can benefit and who, which businesses should use Score Navigator? I, I, I think it's open for everybody, Gary. We're, if you go to scorenavigator.com, and up at the top there's a, a place for a member login to, to, to either get a report in Score and the point deductions, or you can hit the business side. And a business can go in and we can enroll them. We have to make sure they're a legitimate business of, of what they're doing to provide credit uh, for an individual. But we're, what it helps them out on that side and what we're seeing with a lot of the mortgage companies and the auto places is they're able to get a copy of the report with a soft pull. So there's no hard inquiry. So it doesn't take their potential um, con- customers' credit score down. But what they'll do is they'll get a copy of the report in the score but they also get our, our point deduction technology. They get our, our target score simulator. They get the, the money simulator. So they're able to work back and forth with that consumer to put them in a position to get the best rate of financing. Uh, one of the other things that we've added in there that, that I really like is they're able to upload and store certain information. So if it's a, if it's a company that does uh, renting and they want to hold a lease in there, they can. If they want to store employment uh, verification, they can do that. There, there's ways that they can have stuff put into that file so when they go back at any time, 24-7, they can access it back. And it's all done in a, in a secured uh, environment. I think one of the things that uh, concerns me is how up-to-date is credit information, whether you're talking about a company or an individual. 
I, I know that from past experience, uh, Rusty, when I've, I've looked at my credit report, my God, some of this stuff is ancient. Stuff that has been paid off for years is still listed. Or uh, how do you, how do you get things up to date and why is it in this age of nanoseconds, do you find stuff that's years old still on your credit report? It's the the system. It's it's there's there's so much data going on, Gary, and that and, and that is a good question because that's one of the things that we do with Credit DNA, and it's creditdna.us, or you can go to mycreditdna.net, and that's an update process for you. So you can log in, and they handle all three credit bureaus. Uh, Experian, Equifax, and TransUnion, the software that we have analyzes that data. And sure, it's going to show you where most errors occur, but it's going to bring up those old accounts like that. And those are pretty simplified. And so the data is sent to each one of the three bureaus to get that completely updated, and then it's run back through the point deduction technology so that way you have a an accurate reading on the amount of points you can recover in order to raise your credit score. One of the things that you've pointed out in a previous show is that you've been in this business for over 20 years, and this is kind of scary, but I'm going to repeat it. You have never, ever seen a credit report that was completely accurate. I have never seen a report that has been completely accurate. And, and I've looked at, Gary, I've looked at over 500,000 credit files. And I, I have yet to see one that's completely accurate at all times. Now, 60 Minutes did a damning report on the fact that it's nearly impossible for an individual to get your credit report corrected. True or false? That, that is true. And, and, the, and the, one of the biggest reasons for that are, is that there's 20,000 or so credit repair companies that are out there soliciting consumers to pay them money to erase bad credit. And they're sending out these letters, Gary, to the credit bureaus, and they're being, you know, they're just being piled up on. And so what happens is, is when a consumer actually tries to do something themselves, which they can do, they're just, it's just being put on the back burner because the, the credit repair companies are, are being deemed frivolous. Uh, the disputes are irrelevant. Um, and so everybody's penalized for it. And I think that's, in, in fairness to the credit bureaus, they, that's probably why there, uh, you know, a lot of that's happening. Uh, a consumer can work other ways with a credit bureau to get stuff updated. Um, e- even if they have to get on the phone and have to spend an hour with them, sometimes that's, to me, is much better than paying some company a whole lot of money to uh, send out letters that the, the bureaus aren't going to recognize. And that's why they're not being updated properly. And in a state like ours, where all of us who pay taxes, and over 3 million taxpayers in South Carolina had their Social Security numbers breached by uh, and hacked through the uh, Department of Revenue in South Carolina, we're all in jeopardy, or could be in jeopardy, of losing uh, our identity, um, now, you know, I, my brother-in-law, whose last name is James, has already been hacked twice. Um, with a name like Posick, uh, that's going to be a little more difficult, I think, you know. But but the fact of the matter is, uh, if you talk to anybody, Rusty, who has who has lost their identity, it is... Uh, it is nearly impossible. It takes hours and hours and hours of work. It's labor intensive on their part to try to correct something that ain't their fault that they've fallen victim to. You're you're, you're correct, Gary, and, and, and it is. It, it's tough. You know, we get up every day and we go to work and we we trust the system and we trust what's going on. But now that technology has has come up. There's so many more people that are advanced into hacking into a system and and uh, and getting into our stuff. Plus, there's companies that just don't have the tight security measures put into play because of the cost. 
there, there's a lot of cost for security, and they just kind of let it go by. You know, just you know what you're talking about in South Carolina. They were thinking, what are the chances somebody's going to come in and hack into our system? You know, what are the odds? Well, those odds are strong because people are going after those type organizations now. And nothing is safe. I mean, even the even the most sophisticated systems are are you know our federal government and has admitted that um, we're being hacked all the time, and so therefore, I, you know, a lot of people, and I'm sure you're asked this question by a lot of people who are your subscribers: Is it safe to do business on the internet? It's it's tough. It's tough. You know, I'll be honest, you know, even when we speak to people on the phone on the credit management side, they're giving up a lot of personal information. And and those people are from all over the United States, and they're trusting the person on the phone that's getting that information, and then we're telling them, don't ever do that again. You know, you're, you're giving us information. Well, we could be anybody. You know, yeah, sure, we have a website. Sure, we have that. Sure, we've been in, in business, you know, since 2002, and, and we've been doing this, but that doesn't mean anything but we have to go through our compliance it's called pci compliance and we have the strictest hardest way of anybody to be able to infiltrate into our system now am i going to go on you know and drive around with a truck and say you know i'll give you a million dollars if you can get into our system and and invite people to come in to try to hack into us no we're not going to do that but we we have some really good tight stuff but then we're going back and telling that consumer, look, just because you're doing business with us and you can log in 24-7, you can see these things, if you're not getting something to identify that it's one of our representatives contacting you, do not speak to them. Do not give them your information because people go out and they, they, they search for that. The unfortunate thing is that these people who do this for a living and and do it some just for the hobby are always looking for cracks. They spend hours on end uh, getting their jollies and seeing if they can't break your system, if they can't somehow find a crack to hack you. And they're doing it from outside the country, and so that's what that's what's even you know makes me go wow. You know, there there are people in other countries. They're not even in Missouri doing it. They're they're somewhere else. And they're trying constantly every day to to get into our systems to to see what's going on our creditors, our banks, you know, college funds, anything. They're 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 out to get us, and uh, so we have to stay protected. Absolutely true. There's no doubt about that. Yeah, we'll, we'll take a break and come back with more right after these messages. Heart disease, joint pain, allergies. I care. The list of health needs we're faced with goes on and on. But it's comforting to know there is one health care practice in the Midlands with the expertise to take complete care of you. University Specialty Clinics. Only at University Specialty Clinics will you find a team of 200 doctors who are expert physicians and world-class medical educators. Whether you need a simple physical exam or need complete, complex medical treatment, you can trust the doctors at University Specialty Clinics to take special care of you for life. Call 255-3400 for an appointment. That number again, 255-3400. University Specialty Clinics is owned and operated by the University of South Carolina School of Medicine, where we practice what we teach. When credit scoring was introduced into the marketplace in the mid-90s, who really knew the impact it would have on our lives today? The three-digit number determines the rate of financing we get on our home and auto loans, insurance rates, and even employment. But do you know how your credit score is calculated, and is it accurate? Do you know what to do to raise your credit score or change errors in your credit report? ScoreNavigator.com at just $19.95 a month not only gives you the most accurate credit score in the industry, Industry, it will tell you how to increase your credit score. Listen to information about you and your credit on the fourth Wednesday of the month from 1 to 1.30 right here on Health, Wealth, and Happiness. And that is today, and that's what we're talking about with the founder of the company, Rusty Brazzi. And uh, Rusty, a lot of people who are maybe listening for the first time may be wondering, well, what's the advantage of me spending 20 bucks a month and getting Score Navigator. 
Um, that, that's that's a, a good question, too, Gary. Uh, one of the great things is, obviously, we've talked about it before, they don't have to continuously pay it. Sometimes people pay it one time, and they've got all the information they need, and then they go on and great things happen for them. But with scorenavigator.com, you're not only getting a copy of a credit report and a credit score, but we're analyzing the credit data to show you and highlight where most errors will occur. And we're going to have steps of recommendations, long-term and short-term, on what you can do in order to take care of that problem. But the unique things that we have in there with the target score simulator allows you to put a number in, and it will show you step-by-step what you can do in order to achieve that score. And now it will actually tell you if you follow those steps, what day is the best day to have somebody pull your credit in order to have your score maximized? It will give you that maximized score date. There's a money simulator that's in there that says if you want to invest $500 into your credit, where should that money go in order to be able to raise your credit score? Those are just a few of those things that are in there, Gary. If they've got to establish new accounts, we have recommendations that are in there with certain companies that will issue them credit that report right away, report to all three bureaus where they can start raising their score as well. The other thing that um, you've taught me is that yeah, there are ads on the Internet all the time. You get them, you know, as, uh, as spam usually, but, uh, you know, find out your credit score. You know, you go to the credit bureau of your choice. You got three to select from, but get your credit score. What you've said is that number many times often is not the credit score that those who issue credit, in fact, will get. If they're using a different algorithm altogether. And so you, you go in with your chest out saying, well, I got, a, I got pretty decent credit. I, I got a, uh, a 643 and you apply for a car loan and the finance guy is comes back and says well that's not the number that I'm getting a 643 you want to see I right here it is and I I got it from one of the the three and you show him your paperwork and he shows you his and it's 521 what's going on here rusty it's based on different risk factors. And then there's the, the FICO score that was developed by Fair Isaac Corp. And then there's the Vantage score that was actually put together from the three uh, major credit bureaus. The algorithm is different because there's more weight put on. So people have to look at credit scoring as a, as a measurement of weight. And I put it as the score, yeah, that's going to determine if you're going to get financed or not. But that's not the most important part. It's the actual credit data. Because scores on the Fair Isaac can run from 350 to 850. So there's 500 points that are in there somewhere. And you've got to know where those points are at of what you're missing. Not what you already have because nobody's going to give us that your scores of 600 on any of the formulas and say, well, this particular account is 20 points. This one's 60 points. This one's 80 points. We're not going to get that. So our system goes reverse, and it takes it from that 850 down, and it says this is why your score's not a if, – if, if your score's showing a 580, this is why your score's not a 670. That might be your maximum score. It's going to show you why you're not at your maximum. And to me, that's more important. The credit data, knowing that the information is correct, Number one. Number two, protecting your data. And if you have your data corrected and you have it protected and you know the steps that are necessary to take, you will maximize your score. You'll always have a good score and you'll be able to maintain it. No matter which place you go to apply, you will have a high score under their qualifications. When I first talked with Rusty, he said, do you know what your credit score is? I said, I have no idea. I've never bought into finding it out. He said, well, let's, let's find out. And he put one of his technicians on and, and the, the guy kind of 
he was giggling and Rusty was on the other line. The guy was kind of giggling and I said, uh, is there something the matter? He said, no. He said, it's, no, it's just been a long time that I, since I've seen a, a credit score quite like this. And I said, well, what is it? And he said, well, it's a 791. I said, I see. I said, um, what would I have to do to make it any better? And he pressed the button on his computer and he said, well, there are some things you could do to raise it about 10 points, but quite frankly, it's not worth your effort. And I like that fact. I mean, you know, I had pretty much maximized where my credit score was. And <clears throat> so I said to Rusty, well, what can I do with this information? He said, well, one thing you can do with it is you can go back to your, your credit card holder and probably renegotiate the interest rate you're being charged on your credit card because you are, you're the kind of person that credit card companies want. He said, huh, just out of curiosity, how often do you get something in the mail wanting you to sign up for a credit card? I said, oh, at least a couple of week. He said, I'm not surprised at that. Rusty? Absolutely, because our credit information is being sold throughout the day. So people, be very careful about just going out and applying for credit. If, you, if you're going out to look at a car or, or a home or something and you have your credit pulled, now the person pulling is not sharing your data, well, obviously with their competitors, but the credit bureaus are selling that data. So that data is picked up. You, you'll have another 20 auto places that may buy what they call trigger leads, and they will have your information to contact you to see if they can take care of your financing or if they can sell you whatever it is you're out looking for. And that's why, again, Gary, I say go to a site, even if it's if it's one of the ones owned by the credit bureaus versus scorenavigator.com, go in, get a copy of your report, look and see what you've got, make sure your data's right, Make sure you're maximized before you go out and apply. And once you go out and apply, if you're not going to be doing anything else, just put a put a, an alert on your reports with the bureaus and have them where nobody else can contact them, do anything to be solicited, um, so you're not being you know bothered every day with somebody trying to sell you something. Okay, well, you know, I think that what you're saying is is absolutely true for those people. And the other thing that I like about your service, you probably probably the majority of people that subscribe, twenty bucks is enough. Nineteen ninety nine one month will give them all the information they need, and um, and they don't have to subscribe more than a month. But it's going to give them information that's there. And periodically, it ain't a bad idea to find out where they are. Absolutely, Gary. I, I would say on a percentage-wise, 80% of the people that go to scorenavigator.com for 1995 get enough information and enough tools over a 30-day period of time that they, they don't need to get it again. They can come back later on, you know, if they want to check it again, if they're getting ready to apply for credit or they just want to see what's going on. But it's not a reoccurring. It, it, they've got the stuff there. They've got the tools. Use them. And then there's a percentage that has long-term stuff, and they need help with the bureaus, and that's where that's where they have the opportunity to go into uh, the creditdna.us. And if they do that, they can, they can subscribe to that service month to month. They can do it three months, six months, a year. It's entirely up to themselves. And then they have professional people that will work with them and coach them and, and take care of different correspondences for them in order for them to get their data corrected and, and maximize their score. Rusty, I thank you so very much for coming and sharing on Health, Wealth, and Happiness. 